and, uh, and I know it's been a, a long day, so we will keep to time, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be out of here by four o'clock, um, and finished. So, can I invite, I'd like to invite uh, John Holt from Activists, who have been our sponsors, our main sponsors here today, um, and we are very grateful to them, because without their support, it would be very difficult to put on an event like this. Um, particularly because you never know how many people, how many members are going to come. And also a lot of you, as you know, came um, uh, new to the IPF, hadn't signed up for membership, though of course you will all be members um, over the next week. But uh, without the, the, the guarantees and the support that we've had from actors that would make a conference event like this very, very difficult. So we're very grateful to them. And I'd like to ask John now to come up and talk to you a little bit about Actors Academy what it can do for you. Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm, my name's John Holt. I'm the uh, Senior Key Account Executive for South of England. Uh, I'm just going like, to spend about the last five to ten minutes talking about the Actors Academy and uh, how it benefits uh, pharmacy. Um, so for those of you who don't know, just a quick introduction of what the Actors Academy is. Um, it's launched um, in 2009 uh, rebranded in 2011 uh, as an online complementary training tool um, for pharmacy. Um, it's free, um, it provides quality clinical and business knowledge, um, and it's uh, easy to navigate. It's um, cu we're currently almost up to 6,000 users, uh, and the, the difficulty is, and what we've identified, is like I said, it's a complementary service. It's very easy to sign up, but it's very easy to sort of slip out the ways of not using it on a regular basis. So I just thought I'd highlight just sort of the benefits of the Actors Academy and what it brings to you. So there's a screenshot there of the Actors Academy website. Um, just a couple of areas to explore. So just a few examples there. CPD courses. Um, personal development plan is accessible. There's an Ask Activist service uh, where you can ask any, act any, any question um, well are to um, provide the Actors Academy website, we'll come back with an answer within 72 hours. So that's a really good tool. Uh, we have briefings, so that will be a number of topics, whether it's uh, HR specific, it could be on a number of uh, industry developments. Uh, general customer material, so what you've got in front of you, anything can be accessible there. The user guide, which is what you've got a hard copy of in front of you, uh, that can also be accessible online as a quick reference. And then general industry news. As you can see from the screen before, there was an option to, to scan, uh, to uh, select on the banner ad. We launched uh, the Academy app uh, middle of last year. And the reason for that was really to accessibility of the website. So the website was, was you were able to go on quite easily, but being realistic in a, in a pharmacy, uh, you needed that extra convenience. So whether it's doing courses, whether it's just viewing uh, industry news, etc., having it to hand on a mobile, on a tablet, is a lot easier. As you can see on the right-hand side, it's available on all devices, iPhone, Android, uh, and all tablets as well. Uh, again, free to join, uh, so by all means, have a look and download the app. Uh, we actually won an award for it, Pharmacy Products of the Year in 2014. Um, we sort of introduced this app back at the uh, middle of last year, as I said. Um, and it's got a lot of information on it, but it's looking at what we can, how can we, we can improve it uh, for this year. Uh, but definitely worth a look. So an example of the courses, we've got over 30 courses, it's looking up to 40 by probably mid-year. Uh, we'll, we'll probably add a new course, uh, probably usually two or three, uh, every three months. Uh, and that's really done by research. Um, so we'll do key groups around the country um, throughout the year and to find out what courses are going to be relevant for uh, community pharmacists. Um, we've highlighted their business zone, so in the last year, 18 months, Something that's been really popular is the business zone courses. So rather than pharmacy um, dispensing courses, it's more been working with the University of Greenwich uh, on a lot of business um, courses, which are really useful. And you see the average time taken to complete a course uh, and an exam is 40 minutes. Uh, so you have course material and then a um, questionnaire, a question exam to, to follow after that. Very easy to use, uh, and the course material is easy to view as well. That's constantly updated. 
So I'll touch on the areas, uh, just go into them in a little bit more detail. So I mentioned about our Ask Activists. So the Personal Development Plan, um, you, you can see there's the place where you can um, keep track of all the courses you've done um, on an ongoing basis. The Ask Activist facility is really useful. Um, we've seen a lot of people um, ask a lot of questions on a variety um, of topics. The briefings is a useful one. So this, is how, this has industry stories, key articles. Um, you see there that we've put sort of workplace developments and HR dilemmas. Um, so there might be a query about um, pregnancy. There could be a number of topics that, that, that come that way. Uh, and uh, users find that really useful. The general custom material, so that, that directs you to whatever material you'd find useful, whether it's activist um, scheme material or, or whether it's training material, that will all be accessible and, and easy to navigate on the website. And then general industry news, so that will be updated, that's a news feed on the website that updates uh, on a regular basis. This is an example of a business zone course. So when you pick the topic um, of a specific course, you'll see there, um, once you pick the topic, it highlights whether the uh, course has been accredited. So that one in particular, we've been working with the University of Greenwich on. Um, you see there, you've got the course material. Simply click that, and that will take you through to a PowerPoint presentation with a number of screens on that specific topic. And then you click the bottom one for take exam, and that will be usually a 10-question 10 10 question, uh, exam. So looking at what we want to do in 2014, um, we want to uh, look at the National Pharmacy updates. Um, we've got seven new courses currently scheduled um, with three new business zone courses. Um, we've got new courses identified, um, what the actual topics are, and we'll tend to agree what, how many courses we want to launch in the year, and then we'll pick the courses that are relevant based on market research. Um, as I touched on before about the app, the app was launched last year. We're looking to improve that and, and add a lot more information onto it. So, like I said, have a look at the app, have a look at the website. If there's anything missing, um, with, there's a, there is a feedback area. Um, for anything that's missing, it's really useful to see what we can get added on there. Uh, the website will be redesigned during this year, probably in the next six months. And that's just, just updating it, really. It's been updated and rebranded in 2011. Um, but again, we want to make it as easy as, easy as possible to navigate and make it very simple and very quick. So just to summarise, uh, so the Activist Academy provides business and clinical advice for those working in a, in a, in a modern day pharmacy. Um, as I said before, the registration is free. Um, I've put the website there, uh, so just simply uh, search for activistacademy.co.uk. Uh, I touched on there are over 30 courses, but there, there will be more added on a regular basis over the year. Um, the news feed is really a, really a useful tool. Weekly updates on, uh, like I said, industry, workplace, and, and clinical issues as well. And the personal development plan, that's a really good tool. So if, you, if you've got a history of courses you've recently taken, you have got a personal development plan so you can keep a track on what courses you've actually taken. And then I mentioned about the feedback. So anything on the academy, it's constantly being updated, constantly being refreshed, and we'll listen to the needs on what you find useful on it to make sure this is a real, really good, useful tool uh, for pharmacy. Okay. Thanks very much, John. <clears throat> I don't know if there's any questions at the moment. Yes. <laughs> that question gets asked every, every time. It's, it's, what we're looking at as a company is we're not just a generic manufacturer, we're looking at offering a service. So part of the, part of the offering a service is offering extra um, things and training is an important, important part of it. So really that, that's kind of changed the word free uh, from complementary, because complementary always sounds like there's something, there's, there's always a catch, but there really isn't, it's, it's free to use. Okay, thanks very much, so on that theme of how can you um, learn, how can you improve your own professional development, it's a fantastic video now um, for Leslie Johnson. Leslie is the practice development lead uh, for the RPS, and um, she's going to tell you a little bit more about it, how you could uh, make the best of what you want to do as well. Thanks a lot. Right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the IPF for inviting me along. Um, a bit of background, 
just joined the RPS about six months ago as the faculty development lead. I was originally with uh, the MPA as the head of training, so I'm sure I've met you all in some shape of disguise and trained some of your staff a long time ago. Then I moved on to CIG as the head of training. Um, and I said, moved to the RPS, and this is something, development, the, your development um, as pharmacists and recognising your advanced practice is something that's very dear to my heart because we're all sitting in this, this room, we're all pharmacists and we're probably all, if we are asked, we'd say we're community pharmacists. Um, and that's probably about as far as our recognition would go. Um, nobody recognises your wealth of expert exper experience or any specialisms. Like I've got an education degree. I never tell anybody about that. So this is why I've, I've swapped up the RPS to leave this faculty um, because it, it's something I've aspired to. I think we all should be recognised beyond our degree days. So um, I'm going to touch on that a bit, but I just wanted to wrap up a bit and sort of those people who weren't in the record, um, because in, what was the, the um, session called? The one that, looking after your patients and what your patients think. Um, there's a lot of... I didn't write it with Finn, and it's sort of just amazing how we've um, sort of come up with some similar themes. So going forward from today... I came with a few nuggets, and it, as I say, it crosses over a lot with Finn. You know, to try you know, walk away from today with an action plan. You know, so I know it's only going. You know, so th there's only one, two things you can possibly do in your very, very busy lives, and um, you know, either introduce a new service or improve an existing one. You know, just some ideas I came up with was you know, check out the support and guidance from you know, the professional professional bodies, such as the RPS, and I'm going to show you how this links in. There's a lot of stuff there. You shouldn't be trying to do everything on your own. Really look there. The MPA, the IPF, all have a lot of stuff there. can help you develop a service or improve the one you're doing. Support groups, that's another one. Link with the pharma companies. I mean, activists, they've got lots of stuff. I know records have got lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff there to help you do these services. You're not there on your own. I think we touch in our group session get your staff involved, you know, sort of go back from today, if you're trying to do everything yourself on one of your services, get your staff involved, they are very, very well trained staff, I know that because I probably in the MPA days trained a lot of them, so I do know the level of their training and they are there, use them. Market your services, that's something else we really touched on, you know, market your, market your services with the public, the patients, and network with the other healthcare professionals, they probably won't even know your doing a weight management or a stop smoking that is so important, we work so much in isolation in community and I understand why because I was a community pharmacist a few, not so long ago so you haven't got time to you know, sort of wander around and do lots of wonderful marketing but what you can do is market yourself by having conversations with your other healthcare professionals and collaboratively, collaboratively work with each other in an area, I know it's lots of us are in competition but you know sort of three together would be excellent four together in a high yeah. street Think about, another thing to take away from today is think about evaluating or auditing your service. You know, very often we do these fantastic services. We look at sort of how many patients, you know, we get through. But do you ever go back and have a look and see, you know, the outcomes of the intervention? Does it make a difference? Does it set out what, does it set out to do what you wanted to do originally? You don't have to do this, this type of thing. You could, you could devolve to a technician or a member of, another member of staff. Again, you know, you don't, you don't do it in isolation. At the RPS, we do have support in helping you to prepare and conduct these clinical audits. Just look around, you know, sort of, you know, take a little bit of time, but don't think you've got to do everything yourself or in isolation. And it is very important, this clinical audit, I think, you know, sort of for your patient care and safety, and also for the development and improvement of your service, you know, you must keep that driving forward. What about thinking about a bit, getting involved in research? You know, did you know the RPS has a research-ready service which helps community pharmacists um, become routinely involved in funded research? You can get grants, you know, something from as small as £5,000 to backfill your time so then you can go and do some research. Um, or even you can go off a bit more than that and go off and do a master's. If you live, I'm sure everybody has a university nearby. Why not link? You know, like it's Hertfordshire University. They're all up for doing research, particularly with community pharmacists. So this is something that the RPS, which I uncovered when I joined the RPS, was this research ready. You know, why don't we know about it in community pharmacy? We always think research is for somebody else, academia, um, and it's not. There's lots of opportunities there. And I think audits, evaluation, and research enables us to generate the knowledge and evidence that 
continually improves outcome and that outcomes depend on that. So think about it. If you're not sure, speak to the research team at the RPS. They're there, they're on the end of the phone. There might be something, it might be very small, but can make such a difference in your area. Visit the website. There is a map of evidence. Now that map of evidence lists people who have done research in, in various areas so that you can have a look in your area to see who else who's done, done something like that. And they can probably help you or you could join up with them. So that is just two things. I just wanted to sort of plant those seeds. There's something different you could do and quite easily. The third thing today is what is my passion is about your professional development. The whole of today is all about developing you as an as a, um, advanced practitioner. As you can see, I'm going to talk about CPD, which seems to be always on the agenda, continuing fitness to practice, and then what I've just launched, the faculty membership. So CPD, we all know what it is. We all know it. You know, it's anything that you, you learn that makes you better able to do your job as a pharmacist. And so these workshops today, fantastic. Networking with each other, fantastic. Even walk away with a nugget of information from a colleague, absolutely amazing. Learning, as I say, learning from outcomes and conferences. Learning with others. I've been, I've just been made aware at another conference of that, that in certain little areas, pharmacists are getting together and doing CPD groups. And I've been asked to go and talk to one of them. Uh, once a month, somebody takes a lead, and they get, and then they have a, a meal afterwards. That's the reason why I'm going. By the way, not to talk. I want the meal. There's a Tuesday curry group. You know, sort of, it's you know, don't do things in isolation. Isolation. I can't emphasise that. It's, it's it's quite a, a thing that we are typical of, I think, in community. CBD can be practice-based learned. doesn't have to be, you know, you sitting here listening to me or, or my colleagues. Um, Self-directed learning and, of course, professional audit. Don't forget what I've just talked about, research and or clinic, clinical audit. That all links back into CPD. The membership of, of the RPS faculty. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of it. It is this professionally, profession-wide recognition scheme allows you to demonstrate your development and your advanced practice. You know, some of you, you all are amazing businessmen, otherwise you wouldn't be the women having your own pharmacies. You know, sort of nobody celebrates that. It identifies where you are in your practice and what you need to know at different stages of your career. You know, sort of I'm at the back of my, of my career, I'm still learning, you know, sort of we've got some youngsters coming through, you know, carves a, a, a career pathway. It also, and more importantly, I think, recognises your development and allows you to demonstrate to others your um, attainment and stage through the use of post nominals. So you join the faculty, you will get some post nominals. It tells the commissioners that you are delivering a quality service. It tells your other healthcare professionals you were going beyond the norm. So that's why I think joining the faculty is so important. It's part of your RPS membership to get the tools. So why not, why not sign up and have a look at it? To actually get those post nominals, it's, it's not a hard process. It's not a rush. You can, you can submit a portfolio for assessment whenever you like. It's not like CPD it has to be done by a certain day. It actually is when you're ready with your portfolio to, to come in for assessment. Now, the assessment, you have to put in a portfolio, of, of a practice-based one. Some peer assessments. Now, that is something totally new to pharmacists in the community. We're not used to asking users of our service, like GPs or nurses and um, patients, what did they think of your service? And actually, I think it's a really good thing because, you know, some of the peer assessments I've seen coming in from people who've gone through the faculty have been amazing. And I think it's, you know, sort of, again, we just don't look outside the pharmacy to ask for that um, review. And then there's an expert practice assessment, which for most of us in this room would be a, a practice-based, a professional-based CV, if not a case-based a case discussion. That comes in whenever you're ready. We have trained faculty assessors who then assess you and then award one of those three post nominals. And I say, I'm not going to go into it in huge depth because there's quite a lot to go through, but happy to talk to people afterwards. But why I wanted to, why I put continuing fitness to practice afterwards... I don't know whether you realise, do you, do, I don't, put your hands up, who knows that CPD is changing and we've got revalidation or continuing fitness to practice coming in? Right, a <laughs> couple, or you're all asleep or ready to go home. <laughs> CPD is not fit for purpose. Duncan Rudkin, G-Farm-C, has said that. It's great, it shows you how you fill forms in, but actually it doesn't give any external um, indicators of how your practice um, 
what, what, your, what your practice has done to change your practice or more importantly on your patient. So in 2018, is that right, Graham? Do you know it's 2018 or 17, isn't it? It's coming anyway. Yes. I think it's sort of 2017-18. So CPD is going the way we know it. And I, I have to say, I was just called it recently for, to put my records in. And I have to say, it was just a test of my filling my um, forms out. Um, yeah, do you agree? Some of the audience agree. So continuing fa fitness is, practice is going to come in. And what it's going to be is you will have to submit. There will be some CPD review, some form. It won't be in the form it is at the moment. You will have to put some peer review demonstrates some peer review and you also have to show you've been measured against some external performance indicators. Now if you just think back to the last slide, what did I say the faculty was? The faculty was a, a, a practice-based portfolio, that's measurement against external indicators, and it was some peer reviews. So one reason why you should join the faculty is to help you through this continuing fitness practice. And I think particularly for community, even for our, our multiple <coughs> colleagues, you know, they're going to, you're going to need help. And I think if you can get into the faculty now, get into the, the, the way of doing a portfolio, um, would, be the, would be the best thing going forward. Um, so what have we been doing? We've been working very hard with the G Pharmacy to make sure our faculty assessment tools measure up and align with what the G Pharmacy is going to ask. Um, Duncan Runkin has come out and said that the faculty model... Three, the three pieces of assessment are the gold, gold standard. That's what they are wanting everybody wanting the fit, continued fitness to practice to measure against. They want the external input, which gives you know, GFARMC assurance that CPD has changed pharmacists' practice rather than making good records. It aims to bring in quantitative dimensions instead of just qualitative dimensions. So my warm message is to you today, you've got some leaflets on your, on your chair, read it. You know, sort of, if you're part, members of the RPS, getting access to all the faculty tools is part of your membership. And I'm quite happy being, if you're confused or don't know how to do it, there's some numbers on the back phone, we're all there to help you. So pretty, what does the faculty mean to you? But what does, actually let's broaden that out, what does your professional development mean to you? It's an investment in your, your, it's an investment. All of you in the room invest heavily in the training of your staff. I know that from my MPA days. However, you need to recognise you are the most important asset in your business. And yet, you know, we do sometimes don't invest in ourselves. Professional development also gives you a clear indication <coughs> to you, to, to other people, that you are investing in yourself and in your business. It also demonstrates to commissioners and GPs that you are doing the right thing and there's some assurance there. It differentiates you from the rest of the profession. You know, you've got increased competition. I don't need to tell you from all these people. So, you know, developing yourself, being a member of something like the RPS faculty just makes you stand out for the crowd because the faculty's not going to be for everybody. But, you know, for those people who want to just stand out from the crowd, it is going to be for them. So the faculty, the RPS faculty, it's supporting pharmacists to be the best you can possibly be. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And what we're trying to get from this conference, and indeed the work that the IPF uh, does all year round, is to try and support you and to bring together partners who can also help to support you in what you're doing. Finn, do you want to join me? Um, we said that we'd spend the last 10 minutes just offering up an opportunity for questions and answers, only either on uh, what you had this morning, the sessions that we did this morning, or indeed on any of the other issues, or feeding back views to us on the sort of things that you would like us to cover or to look at. <coughs> we are also taking this opportunity to announce that we will be holding a further conference later in the year, an autumn conference, in early October. Um, and obviously, the same information will apply that those members, fully paid up members, will also have an opportunity to attend that conference free. Um, we're really keen to be able to come along. If you, um, you will be getting newsletters from now onwards, so that will give you more details about 
the conference and other events that will be taking place. Absolutely, but, but one of the things we want to do in the October conference, ladies and gentlemen, and, and we mentioned it in the group that we were working in, um, we, we need you to actually show that this is a benefit, okay? We've spent a lot of time today not just talking to you, but trying to work with you. And so what we're really going to ask people is, is can you come back in six months' time and show us, be it in a poster form or a short talk or something that you're really comfortable doing about how much of a difference is made to you? And, and be that through working in groups together or be it through putting on one of the services or actually, as we talked a lot of in our group, by stopping doing something and helping others to do it on your behalf. Okay? So, so we recognize that, we, you know, we started off this morning, independents are facing a really challenging time. And actually it's really, if we're really honest about it, it's going to get much worse than it's been for the last 10 years. And we don't want to terrify you and get you all to run out of the room and sell your contracts next week. But we want to work with you and help each of us to work together to try and make this so much easier. Now, Leslie put a great slide up before about what's coming in terms of revalidation. But what, we're, what I don't want us to do is start working harder. We've just got to work smarter and stopping what we're doing that we don't need to do and enabling other people to do that. And, and if we can get each of you to come back in six months' time or indeed on the webinars or in any of the opportunities we'll have to share those stories about the good practice you have and how you've done it, like Jignesh and others have done today, that would be really, really useful. So remember at the beginning of the day, I pointed out that we had this form here, which was about the projects that you want to do. And so what we'd like you to do is, as a result of today is to fill this out, to think about it, and then to, to tell us how you're able to deliver some of those over the next few months and to share it with people. And I had an interesting conversation with a, a couple of pharmacists over lunch who were doing something that they thought everyone else was doing. But actually, it's the really good thing that they're doing. And quite often you assume that other pharmacists do it as standard practice. But you don't know that unless you talk to people. And so you need to share your ideas and learn from each other. And that's what the IPF is very much about, which is the peer-to-peer -peer support and learning from each other. So, do we have any questions before we conclude today's event? You can't all be that tired that you just want to get home. It's late on a Sunday. No? Graham? Graham. Yeah, Even absolutely. We absolutely agree. I mean, one of the things we only slightly touched on at the very start is trying to get people to work together. And so when we started off the webinars, um, I, I wasn't in this building, but just around the corner yourself and Girish got over 100 people together into a room. Uh, I think Matthew went one up in Lancashire. There was some in, in uh, 
Cumbria as well. So we, we started to put independents together to get them to start to do a little bit like the workshops this afternoon and start thinking. But, but what you're suggesting is we take it one step further. So absolutely, we, we, we can only do this together. I, and I've got to say, we're a small team. <laughs> And, and we need you guys to be involved. So, so we can't do it for you, but we can do it with you, if that makes sense. Yeah? And so together we can do this. Um, and so absolutely, for those who can support us, and we will support them in moving forward. Thanks, Greg. And, and if you've got ideas, and I think there are ways in which we can help to support some of those, please um, contact us. The reason why we established the how-to clinics, and we did these for the first time at the pharmacy show last year, and the purpose of those was exactly that, which was who's doing a really interesting or good service, how do they do it, and how can they share that? Um, and we've taken that and obviously used that again because they were successful um, uh, for today's sessions. And Jignesh is a prime example of somebody who's made it work. He's made it work not just for customers, for his patients, but he's also making it work for his business. Um, the same applies to the other clinics that we've done weight management, smoking cessation, um, we did at the pharmacy show the mobility clinics uh, services as well. And I'm sure that there are many others. There are pharmacists out there, independents, members of the IPF that I know are doing some amazing, fascinating services. But we need to share that. Whether it's things that you're doing, Graham, or things that I know Graham's doing with uh, involving the credit union in his local pharmacy, not going to be relevant to every independent particularly maybe not uh, in certain areas, but rural pharmacies it works. Other places, there are other types of services as well that are about engaging the local community. So we need to think smart and we need to share those best practice ideas and that's what we want to be able to do here. So give us a bit of chance to think it through about how we might do it, but I think it's a great idea. Any other questions? We all want to get home. We all want to get home. <laughs> Can I thank um, activists once again for their support? Um, we will be sending on all of you for coming, and particularly people who have come a long way. Uh, when I saw that there were people apart from him coming from, from Lancashire, I was amazed. Devin. So um, fantastic, but I know that there are people who have come from all over the place for today. And so well done, and thank you for your support. Uh, You'll be getting a feedback form that will come out through the registration site. Please fill it in, tell us what you think of it so that we can help to get this right, um, get it better for the next conference as well. Um, because I'm sure that there are things that we've done right and there will be things that we could do better. So thank you very much and uh, safe journey home wherever you come from. Thank you. <laughs>